Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are finding the centroid of a parabolic spandrel, and that's basically just the shape that is underneath of a parabola. So if we just eyeball it, it looks like the centroid is going to, I don't know, fall somewhere in around here. Um, but what we really want to do is we want to find out what the x component of, uh, of the centroid is, because often in, uh, in statics we'll have like some kind of loading, like maybe snow loading or something that follows the shape that we've modeled as maybe a parabola, and then uh, we'll be able to use that to kind of calculate the reactions and moments and things. So the way that we do this to find x bar is we use our handy dandy equation that we've been using for the last couple of videos. We take the integral, uh, which was x dA, and, and we divide that just again by that integral ray, and that's dA. All right, so we need to figure out what the heck is dA. So if we come down here and just, if we slice this guy up and do vertical rectangles, and then we make those infinitesimally thin, so that now becomes dx, well then the, the little dA is just the, the width times the height, basically. So it's just uh, the height at any given point. So this would be like x out to there. So this... Uh, the height is y equals x squared, so we got x squared times dx, and that's going to give us the area of all of these infinitesimally little thin slices if we were to slice up this whole guy. Uh, so what we can do then is we can uh, we can bring this into the equation. So if we rewrite this a little bit, we know that we are going from 0 to 4 on this interval that we're concerned with. So we have the integral here, it's just 0 to 4, we have x, that's not changing, and then we just have to substitute in dA, and dA was x squared dx, so we have x squared dx, just like that. Alright, and then down here on the bottom, we also, same thing, same interval, and we don't have that first x, we just have dA, which is x squared dx, x squared dx. Cool. Uh, let's just make this a little bit easier to see, so we have 0, to 4, we can combine these to x cubed dx. And this is all over that same thing, 0 to 4. Uh, and that's just x. Nothing's changing down there, dx, just like that. All right, so now this becomes just a very simple integration. We're just doing the reverse power rule. So if we just come down here, uh, the, uh, the integral of this, we just raise that 3 to the n plus 1. So we get x to the 4. And then we bring that down so it's one-fourth, and that is from 4 to 0. And then on the bottom here we have the same thing, basically we're going to raise that. So we have x cubed, and then we'll put that times one-third. And this is over that same interval, so 4 to 0. Alright, so when we substitute these guys in, we basically just get one-fourth times 4 to the power of 4 minus one-fourth times 0 to the power of 4. And on the bottom we get 1 third times 4 to the power of 3 minus 1 third times 0 to the power of 3. And obviously these two terms just go to 0, so we can get rid of those, make our labs a little bit easier. And this just leaves us with, uh, what do we have here? So we just have just 1 fourth times 4 to the 4 and over 1 third times 4 to the third. Alright, so if we simplify that, uh, this becomes actually just 64 uh, over, that's 21.333, and that's just repeating. Put a little line over it. Alright. And uh, if you uh, if you divide these, uh, 64 divided by 21.333 repeating, we get x bar is equal to 3. <laughs> that's a nice round number. Um, and so that's, uh, if we draw this on here, we draw x bar on here, that's equal to 3. Now, we could do this whole thing again uh, for, and solve for y bar, but uh, unless we're looking at horizontal loads, we don't really care. Uh, we can usually get by with just calculating x bar, and uh, this is this is round because for a parabolic spandrel like this, um, it's uh, the the x the x.
component of the centroid is always three quarters of the way away from the small side and one quarter away from the big side. So if you can remember that and you're given a question where you have a parabola that's just y equals x squared or even I guess a constant times x squared, uh, that's where that x bar is going to be. But if you're given, if your teacher gives you like y equals x to the third or x to the fourth or x to the fifth or something to try and mess with you, uh, then it won't be exactly three quarters of the way from the small side and you'll actually have to go follow this process which as you saw is actually pretty easy and then you'll be able to get it so your teacher can't you know you won't get confused if your teacher throws a curveball at you like y equals x cubed or something all right see you guys in the next video